For the sake of time, I'll try to keep things brief from here on out in order to keep things um, from getting too deep. So the next thing we'll be talking about in the Q menu is bevel. Bevel, whenever you click it, will just add a bevel to your mesh. However, this is what it does to a cube. If we were to delete this cube and shift A, add a plane, we can also see that whenever you add a bevel on a plane that it actually adds a 2D bevel. So there is a multitude of ways to deal with bevel when it comes to hard hops. For example, if we were to bevel this, we could press two and see that this actually switches to a vert bevel, basically resetting it to default um, vertice parameters. One of the things that's interesting about vertex bevel is that if you bring it all the way in, clamp overlap is on, which will prevent these things from overlapping each other tragically. However, this will cause some issues down the road. For example, if we were to bring in a cylinder and perform a difference operation and from here perform a solidify, everything looks good so far. But if we were to basically uh, control click bevel to add an additional bevel, we can see that the shading breaks down. Even during the operation of bevel, you can press Z in order to see your wireframe where you can troubleshoot and see what's happening. But my favorite way of seeing wireframe will always be Alt V and then going under wireframe. So we see that because of vertice overlap, we had some geometric mishaps that caused the bevel to actually break here. So if we go under add modifier, we can add a weld. And with all of our modals, basically in any of our modifiers by holding shift and scrolling the wheel, you can actually move it up and down the stack. So you can actually see weld being moved to position four from position five, which basically fixes the shading issue caused by the doubles, allowing this to actually bevel correctly. So just starting out talking a little bit about bevel. Another thing with bevel is right now we have this bevel that started off with vertices, but now we're actually dealing with a larger bevel. And we see that this bevel isn't using vertices. So that means that pressing one will actually allow you to reset the profile to 0.5, but also allow you to adjust the auto smooth amount and change it between 30 and 60 because sometimes bevel and auto smooth go hand in hand. So you'll see in some tutorials where I'll be pressing one or two to actually jump between certain types of bevel profiles to um, get a certain result or to troubleshoot. Another one that you'll see me use is three, which will give you what's called a subdivision conversion bevel, which will basically give you a bevel that will space out the geo, protecting the perimeter, allowing you to basically convert this to subdivision more readily. For example, if I were to want to convert this object to subdivision, even though it's a non-destructive Boolean mesh, I would just click to keep that loop. I would go under add modifier, add a triangulate, and then from here we can press control one, two, three, four in order to add additional subdivisions to this mesh. And this is our result. And this is actually a subdivision capable mesh. If we go under our modifier settings and we turn off optimal display, we can come out and actually see how many eggs had to be broken in order to make such a basket. But bevel is one of those multi-tools, just like all of our tools, where we try to put so much utility and purpose into them that sometimes I feel that their functions get overlooked or misunderstood, or sometimes even simplified due to their names being, well, simplified. So one of the, my favorite ways of using bevel is to press Q, go add a bevel, and then you can just click and apply and you're done with that modal. And then if we hover over the tooltip, we see that there's a control behavior where we can add a new bevel at 30 degrees, which is kind of low, but we can add a new bevel at 60 degrees, which I find to be a little bit better on the high end of new bevels. So we'll do that one. And you'll see that this new bevel doesn't actually affect anything. If I move the mouse, you can see that the width doesn't mean anything. And that's because this bevel is currently not finding any edges to affect of the 60 degree variety. And this is good. This means that we can press X, which will set it to a bevel amount of half of what the previous one is. And then the next time that we bring in an object like a cube and we perform a difference, we see that this cube has been sorted to the bevel level that we just created and put away because we couldn't see it. So we could do the same thing again. We can control shift click bevel in order to add a new 60 degree bevel. We can press X to drop it at half and I'll jump to the modifier stack and collapse it using the modifier helper so you can see what's going on. And if we were to shift D duplicate this cube and we bring this down and we perform a 
difference. We see that this was placed snugly between these two and we're able to continue on with our lives working without any sort of issue, just allowing the pebble to automatically be sorted aside from the occasional issue that can come about from hotlining. So hotlining is something that will definitely happen if you're not mindful of your edges whenever you're performing Boolean operations. But like I said, it is something that I'm optimistic about being fixed in the future. So we'll just have to see how the future changes for that to um, open up for us. So we can also see that throughout this Boolean operation, the shading broke down. So we'll just alt click sharpen in order to use the weighted normal. And we're able to continue working and this weighted normal is just added to the end of the stack. Uh, in closing, I do want to also show that, you know, if I control shift click bevel again, we basically add a new bevel, but it's placed automatically before the weighted normal, but after the last bevel. So we click and apply that and we see that we can just shift a, add another cube, Q difference. And now we have this bevel on an entirely different level, but we can press Q, go back into B with and actually make adjustments to this bevel. So when it comes to the actual fine controls of bevel itself, you can actually change the bevel modifier that you're adjusting by pressing control and scrolling the wheel. You can actually adjust different bevels in your stack and jump to different modifiers, which will be highlighted in yellow as you're seeing here. But when it comes to the finer options of it, that's where the help comes in, which you can press H to toggle help. And we see that we have O for toggling the rendering. We have the tilde, which will change the micro UI style of making it follow the mouse as a little floater or having it sit still or just being a banner at the bottom of the screen. But when it comes to getting familiar with the bevel at depth, I definitely recommend taking a look and trying out some of these options. For example, um, P is one of my favorite because it allows you to go in and adjust the profile. But once we start talking about custom bevel profiles, you'll also maybe be interested in finding out about how you can use custom bevel profiles to trim your models really quickly with detail. But bevel something that deserves its own special video going more in depth in the future. So we'll save it for that time. But I did want to just do something very cursory going over bevel.